scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 11 and 16 through 20. Uh, just prior to this, in the previous chapter, Jesus had sent out the 12 disciples, giving them power and authority to drive out demons, heal the sick, and proclaim the kingdom of God. This morning's reading. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Our gospel lesson today invites us to step out of the reactivity that the world around us reinforces. I don't know about you, but Sometimes something somebody says or the way they, a look they give me or something I hear in the news, um, an email I read, which you should never read and, you know, step into email. You should never fire back an angry one. You'll regret it. But sometimes we react. There's something gets kicked in our gut and we, we just feel angry, defensive, hurt, and we respond in a reactive way. Jesus, what I'm hearing in the, the gospel today that I'm applying to me and I want to share with you is that Jesus offers us, instead of, of being reactive, a way to be responsive. He offers us two things that I'm going to focus on today uh, in my message. The promise of peace and the nearness of the kingdom of God. And sometimes I may use the word kingdom, K-I-N-D-O-M, in place of the word kingdom, because I think kingdom is relationship, the relationship of God to us and us to God. And I'm just, I'm, that appeals to me. So I'm going to focus on verses 5 through 11, because verse 5 bookends, that is the first bookend on that passage, it talks about Jesus proclaiming peace leaving peace, and then the end of verse 11, Jesus says, the kingdom, the kingdom of God is near. And Jesus is saying to his followers and to us, this is how I want you to engage the world. Remember these two proclamations. Stand on them. So I want to talk about those. 
The story of Jesus sending 70 people out into uh, his world um, gives us a rare window about what it was like in his generation. In verses 5 and 6, Jesus sends out disciples with the first proclamation that sounds deceptively simple. He tells those 70 followers, whatever house you enter first, say, peace to this house. Becky! Is it on? Is it on? Uh, uh, wait. How is it on? No, it's on the side. Oh, it's on the side. Well, I'm not going to remember that. Okay, let's see. There. I think it's Yes! Okay. Peace, peace. Don't be reactive, Kathy. Becky, are you serious? Peace. Be peaceful. Respond. I don't think I can do this. So, the word of peace is the first word that Jesus says, I want you to share with those. That's the opening word, the announcing word. Notice that Jesus does not tell them, I thought this was really interesting, he doesn't tell them to do any kind of assessment before they offer that word of peace. He doesn't say, okay, now before you offer that proclamation of peace, go in and say, all right, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you um, a good Christian? Uh, do you love your family? Do you give 10% of everything? Blah, blah, blah. Jesus doesn't do any kind of assessment. He, doesn't, he tells them, don't do any kind of assessment or judgment. Don't prejudge the people whose homes you go to. Just go and share with them that proclamation of peace. Peace be with you. Then Jesus goes on to instruct them in the dynamics of that, of sharing that peace. If anyone is there who shares in your peace, who already knows that peace, then your peace will rest on that person. But if they don't accept that peace, if they aren't able to receive it for whatever reason, then it will return to you. you it, you're not giving away your peace and it doesn't come back to you. If people don't accept it, that's okay. You don't have to worry about that. Hakuna Matata, no worries, Jesus is saying. No worries, just share, share the peace with people that you meet. Now, What's also remarkable to me is that Jesus assumes that his disciples have that peace. He doesn't assume they don't have it or go through and give them a checklist of, let's see if you have that peace. He, he knows they have that peace because of their relationship with him, their kingdom. And it's not just a random generic peace, it's a specific peace. He says your peace, share your peace, which is Jesus' peace with them. How do we do that? What is the dynamic of that? Well, in order to share that peace with others, we have to be well grounded in that peace. We have to Know that peace that passes understanding, that sense of well-being that is promised to us, that sense of shalom that God offers us. It's not just about being calm. It's about knowing and living out that peace. It is confidence in God's abiding presence so that we can also share that presence with others. So that's some of the dynamics, the how, the what we need in order to offer that peace. And another part of that is that it means when we engage other people, we're not to treat them as objects. They are not a problem to be solved or something to be fixed. Even those people who we know need fixing. 
Jesus is not calling us to fix other people. Jesus is calling us to treat them as sacred beings. No matter how much we know that they may not be, in our opinion, but we're not supposed to go to that place of judgment. We are supposed to share peace. Jesus does not advise us uh, to be reactive, to be judgmental, to be scornful. Instead, he says, just share the peace I have given you, the peace that shows you belong to me. And if you, if it's not well received, if, you're, if it's rejected, that's okay. You still have it. You're just going to take it to the next household, the next town, the next person. So that's the first proclamation. Peace be with you. Peace to your household. Then there's a second proclamation. The kingdom of God has come near you. Jesus tells his disciples, share with those with whom you come into contact, share with them the kingdom or the kingdom of God has come near you. This proclamation applies whether they're welcomed, as Jesus talked about in verse 8, or if you look at verse 10, whether the disciples are not welcomed. Jesus says, whether you're welcomed or you're rejected, share that good news that the kingdom, the kingdom of God is near. Jesus is telling us, and it's you know, kind of remarkable, that the kingdom, the kingdom of God is promised to everybody, not just those who receive it well, receive us well, not to those we think are good enough to receive it. The kingdom of God is for everybody. No matter how nasty or mean or negative or ungodly they seem, we're still supposed to tell them the kingdom of God is near. Because Jesus is once again doing that upside down thing, that unexpected way he does things. He's saying, I'm bringing you a message that says, all human relationships are precious to God, not just some of them, but all of them. This is a new way of understanding human relationships. Jesus is saying, it's about love. It's about love, and, and love doesn't involve judgment and assessment. It's a life-changing proclamation Jesus is offering. His love is for everyone. And again, I, this struck me, Jesus doesn't say, now if you're not accepted at that household where you go to visit, don't argue, don't try to convince them, don't try to persuade them, don't get into a, a you know, win-lose battle with everyone. Instead, just signal, signal that you're moving on. And how are you going to signal that you're moving on? You're going to dust the dirt off your feet from where you were at that home. You know, there were a lot of dusty streets and uh, there was, were no sidewalks and no concrete. So Jesus says, I want you to do something that symbolizes and signifies that you've done what you came to do and now you're moving on. I want you to dust your shoes off and move on. And what I think Jesus is saying to them is, by doing this physical act, by dusting off your feet, you are showing that you're not weighed down by their rejection. You are not sitting there going to go, what did I do wrong? What, do, what can I do to fix this? i got to get them to accept this message. No, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to... No worries, hakuna matata. You don't have to worry about that. Just dust your feet off, dust your shoes off, and go on to the next household and see what's in store for you there. 
Jesus invites them to move forward in the confidence of the two proclamations he's given them. Peace to this house and the kingdom, the kingdom of God is near. So what does that mean for our lives in this day and time? We, we read this, we hear the gospel lesson that Karen read, and we know, well, this was Jesus' time 2,000 years ago, but what about for us today? I think it's kind of simple. It's Jesus is saying, if you could live your life with these two principles, you're doing pretty well. You kind of got it inside of you. You've got my message. When you encounter anyone, when you encounter yourself, when you encounter your spouse, your loved one, that person in, that cut you off when you were on your way to work, um, that you just have this reactive feeling to a, oh, I can't believe she did that. Well, I'm going to speed up and get in front of her, and I'll show her who's going to cut off somebody. I'm the master cutter offer. <laughs> Jesus doesn't want us to do that. Jesus wants us to be able to say in our hearts and in our minds, and maybe even in our words, peace be unto you. I know that's not easy, but gee, that's how we are, we are a different we are different because Jesus' message of love is different. And Jesus wants us to be able to say or to think or to pray, the kingdom, the kingdom of God is near. This is the good news of the God, you know, the word gospel means good news. Those two proclamations are the good news of the gospel. Jesus is saying, when you encounter anyone who seems disagreeable, negative, hurtful, shocking, and your first reaction is to be reactive, instead, I want you to transform that. I want you to remember my two proclamations. And I want you, instead of being blaming or accusatory or judgmental or analytical, well, I know what's wrong with that person. They, you know, that kind of reactivity holds us in bondage. It holds us from experiencing that peace of Christ and that nearness of the kingdom of God. We have to turn away from that. So, you have some homework. I'm giving you homework this week. I want you to experiment with these two proclamations this week, every day, not just once, every day. Are you all listening to me? Every day. First of all, I want you to think about how you would restate each proclamation in one simple sentence in your own words. For example, how could you say, peace to this house in your own words. Well, as I've been praying for Lori, who's been having these horrible headaches, you know, my prayer is that peace will be with her, that peace will fill her heart. Or I might, that person that, that cut me off on the highway when I was driving home the other day, instead of thinking, I'm going to show them. I can pray for them. I pray that you have peace and grace the rest of the day. I can pray that for myself. Kathy, get over yourself. Stop being so reactive. Be filled with peace and grace. So think of how you can put that in, in a sentence, in your own words. And the second proclamation, the kingdom of God has come near. We probably don't walk up to somebody in the grocery store and say that, or they might look at us and go the other way. But you can, you can put it into your own words, like, you know, Kathy and Kurt, you are in a, a lot of 
thought right now is going into your family in, in California. And I, I want you to know that God is at work in their situation. That's another way to say the kingdom, the kingdom of God is near. I want you to know that I believe God is at work in your situation. Or with your brother, is it your brother that has prostate cancer? You know, to, to say to, I will say to you, you know, I believe that God is with you in this time. That's another way of saying the kingdom of God is near. God is near to us. Where you could say, I can see God at work, God's love at work in your life. I can see, um, some of us are delivering some desks uh, this week down to the Midwest Distribution Center. Well, I sure can say to those folks, I can see God at work through this gift that we're delivering down there. I can see God's love at work right now for whoever is going to receive those desks. All right, so this week, I'd like to ask you to try, not try, I want you to just try, I want you to do it. Every day, see if you can offer that, each one of those proclamations in your own words, to someone you encounter, whether it's, um, doesn't have to, you don't ever have to say it. Just, you can think it, you can pray it. Um, I don't want you to, you know, be like radically uncomfortable. But I want you to step out and say, this, every day I'm going to, in some way, offer the peace of Christ. And I'm going to say the kingdom or the kingdom of God is, in, is near. In my words, in my prayers, in my thoughts, in my actions, um, in the way I treat someone, in the way I speak to them. So you can do it out loud or silently. And if you would, during the week, if, if you have email and you have my email address, send me an email and let me know how that's going. Tell me an experience you've had, or send me a text, or drop me a note in you're in snail mail, I think that's still around. Drop me a note in the mail. Or give me a call. Leave a message on the church phone. we got to change that message, by the way. Um, so, I just want you to practice this. Practice, what's my word again? Practice hakuna matata. Practice no worries. Practice the peace of Christ. And the kingdom of God is near. Amen.